Number 9. Racist Rampage It's unclear if the young woman knew she was being recorded when she approached her substitute teacher and lashed out in a bizarre rage. The incident happened at Castlebury High School in Fort Worth, Texas one day in 2021. In the video, which appeared on TikTok shortly after the incident, the student could be seen hitting a button to end a call on a landline phone the woman was using. The teacher removed the student's hand from the phone, at which point the youth slapped the substitute's arm and tried to call her mom using the device. During the conversation with her mother, the student called the educator an array of inappropriate names. She also made racist comments, including that the teacher was black and peeing her off, and threatened to F the substitute up. The teen ultimately ended up chucking the phone at the teacher and storming out of the classroom. Before the school could even issue an explanation about the video, it went viral, garnering more than 130,000 views within a matter of days. In a statement, the school district reassured the public that the footage had been turned over to authorities for an investigation and that the student was suspended for three days and possibly facing more disciplinary measures. The district also commended the teacher for handling the situation in a calm and composed fashion. Speaking with local station WFAA, the the girl's mother, Brittany Evans, said that she was unsure where her daughter learned the language that she used during the confrontation. Evans said that she did not use or allow racist language in her household, and she echoed the school's praise for the way the teacher handled the situation. She even said she wanted to contact the substitute personally, but didn't know how to reach her. But the incident raised an important issue that Evans had been struggling to deal with for a long time. She said her daughter is autistic and suffers from bipolar disorder, depression and anxiety. The concerned mother thought her daughter belonged in special education classes and that she had met with district officials more than 10 times to try getting the teen switched out of regular lessons. Evans believed that if the school relocated the young woman to a more appropriate environment, these types of events could be prevented. Number 8. Brendan Depper In a horrifying act of violence that was captured on camera, a male student at Matanzas High School in Palm Coast, Florida, beat a teacher's aide unconscious in early 2023. The video appeared to show 57-year-old Joan Nadich looking back at her attacker in a school hallway and frantically trying to run away as the young man charged at her. During the confrontation, the student flung the much smaller staff member onto the floor, where she landed face down and fell unconscious. He proceeded to stomp on and punch Nadich as many as 15 times as she lay motionless and defenseless on the ground. The assault finally ended when bystanders intervened. Standing at six and a half feet tall and weighing 270 pounds, the accused attacker, Brendan Depper, is bigger and stronger than most people. It took several people to pull him off Nadich, and he appeared to act combative in the footage as staff members fought to subdue him. Nadich was rushed to the hospital with two broken ribs and multiple bruises. In the meantime, authorities charged Depper with felony aggravated battery against a school employee. If convicted, he could face up to 30 years in prison. Since his arrest, he has remained behind bars in Duval County on a $1 million bond. According to police, Depper attached Nadich because she confiscated his Nintendo Switch. Nadich adamantly denied the allegation, claiming that she asked Depper why he had a video game out in class and told him to put it away. He initially complied, but began playing the game again 20 minutes later. Nadich once again told him to put it away, but this time he reportedly responded with explosive anger. The irritated student allegedly began hurling insults at the teacher's aide, calling her names and even spitting at her, prompting her to head to the principal's office to report his behavior. Just moments after she left the classroom, she was attacked. Media reports describe Depper as a special needs student who lived in a group home prior to his arrest. He had a history of behavioral and mental health issues, but was found competent to stand trial after undergoing a court-ordered psychiatric evaluation. Depper remains in custody as he awaits the next steps in the case. Number 7. Lariana Jackson Usually when a social media challenge goes wrong, it happens in the form of the person completing the challenge accidentally hurting themselves. But these reckless dares also often put other people in harm's way, and sometimes it's deliberate. 
A 64-year-old wheelchair-bound teacher reportedly fell victim to a trending challenge in October 2021 when she was attacked at a high school in Covington, Louisiana. Footage of the disturbing encounter showed a woman later identified as 18-year-old Lariana Jackson assaulting the teacher and throwing her to the floor right after the school's dismissal bell rang. In an impact statement that she would later read in court, the victim accused Jackson of punching her in the face, causing her glasses to fall off her face and onto the floor. The student then allegedly grabbed the back of the teacher's head, pushed her out of her wheelchair and punched her repeatedly as she screamed for help. The victim was rushed to the hospital, where she spent several days receiving treatment for her injuries. She suffered from a concussion, trauma to the head and neck, a fractured rib, a sprained wrist, and was one step away from a detached retina, according to an eye specialist who treated her. A student at the high school where the beating occurred told detectives that Jackson carried out the appalling crime as part of a TikTok challenge called Slap Your Teacher. However, District Attorney Warren Montgomery admitted in court that investigators were unable to determine with certainty if this was the case. Jackson was arrested on suspicion of felony battery of a school teacher. During a court hearing in St. Tammany Parish two months after the incident, she pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. The case dragged on for nearly 10 more months before she took a deal and pleaded guilty to one count each of second degree battery and cruelty to the infirmed. In her impact statement, the teacher described the long-term suffering she experienced in addition to her immediate injuries, including mental and emotional trauma, memory loss, hair loss ringing in her ears, and flashing vision. The judge sentenced Jackson to two five-year terms with all but one year suspended, which meant that she would spend a year in prison followed by three years of probation. She was also ordered to attend anger management and mental health counseling following her release from prison and received a lifetime ban on contacting or going anywhere near the victim. Number 6. Troubled Teen Takes Anger Out on Teacher The school day was almost over for language arts teacher Kimberly Burns Fisher when she was attacked by an out-of-control student in April 2018. It all started when Burns Fisher learned that there would be no substitute to replace her absent co-teacher, who helped her instruct her final class of the day to a group of students in Pender County, North Carolina. At least 10 of the 30 pupils had special needs. They were placed in the mainstream class as part of an inclusion program, and according to school policy, the number of special education students in the class required the presence of a specially trained teacher. Burns Fisher had no special education or behavior management training, but nobody was there to help her teach. Left with no other choice, she instructed the class on her own. When she ended a vocabulary review game toward the end of the class, a student became angry because he wanted to continue playing. Listed only as TB in court documents, he called Burns Fisher a moron, and she responded by calmly telling him that he was acting inappropriately. The teacher asked the student to bring his agenda to her desk so she could write a note to his parent or guardian about the incident. As the young man approached, he allegedly lifted his backpack over his head and swung it full force into the left side of Burns Fisher's face. According to court documents, the shocked educator radioed for a crisis response team and tried to stand up, but the student charged at her and knocked her back into her chair. He ripped her walkie-talkie from her hand and charged at her again, this time knocking her into a table and filing cabinet. Burns Fisher accused the teen of kicking her in the head and back, leaving her with serious long-term injuries that put her out of work. Authorities arrested the young man, and the teacher also pursued justice in a series of civil lawsuits. She argued that TB had an extensive history of violence against school staff members and fellow students, including 14 prior incidents consisting of kicking, biting, slapping, headbutting, and other forms of assault. In one alleged attack, the student was accused of pulling a teacher's hair and trying to stab her with a pencil. Another time, a school administrator claimed that TB grabbed him by the necktie, pulled him around, and punched him in the face. According to one of Burns Fisher's lawsuits, multiple teachers had implored the school principal to remove the student from mainstream classes during a meeting several months before she was attacked. All but one of the teachers at the meeting had reportedly been assaulted by TB, and the one teacher managed to avoid an attack only because he escaped from the young man. 
Burns Fisher also claimed that she had been harassed by the student before and that she had asked the principal to transfer him out of her class. But the request fell on deaf ears and the teacher was left feeling like the principal failed to take steps that could have prevented the assault. Her lawsuit against the principal was ultimately dismissed and the teen's criminal case was handled quietly in court. Number 5. Murad Dervish 46-year-old Murad Dervish was expelled from his graduate degree program at the University of Arizona in 2022 for threatening behavior. A few months later, he allegedly walked onto the campus and fatally shot the head of the program, Dr. Thomas Meixner, in broad daylight. The gunman fired several bullets into the victim before fleeing the scene in a vehicle. Police arrested Dervish later that day on suspicion of first-degree murder and aggravated assault. School officials had taken measures to keep Dervish off the property in the months leading up to the shooting as his behavior grew increasingly concerning. They tried bringing criminal charges against the disgruntled former scholar who was accused of threatening Meixner and others, but there wasn't enough evidence. One staff member became so worried for their safety that they began working from home to avoid crossing paths with the ousted student. Dervish was banned from the campus in early 2022 while officials began taking steps to expel him. They changed the codes to any rooms that Dervish previously had access to and circulated a flyer among staff containing his picture and instructions on what to do if he showed up. On two occasions, university police officers visited Dervish's home to discuss threats he was accused of making. After unsuccessfully appealing his expulsion, the decision was upheld and Dervish was permanently banned from the property in June of 2022. Between then and Meixner's murder in October, staff began forwarding emails from Dervish to the police. But there simply wasn't enough to criminally charge him until after he allegedly shot Meixner. According to search warrant documents, police found two handguns, several rounds of ammunition, five knives and two machetes in Dervish's vehicle after the shooting. They also seized three cell phones, several outfits, anti-tracking technology and eviction documents, which showed that he was being kicked out of his apartment for not paying the rent. About a week after Meixner's murder, the suspect's father, Dolgan Dervish, told the news outlet Arizona's family that his son had displayed a long-standing pattern of disturbing behavior. He said he did what he could to try helping Murad and apologized to the victim's family through tears. According to Dolgan, Murad suffers from profound mental health issues that had landed him in and out of prison throughout his adult life. He described his son as a ticking time bomb who was prone to violent outbursts. Dolgan said that when he received a phone call from law enforcement about the shooting, his first thought was that Murad had finally killed someone. By then, the concerned father had tried convincing authorities that his son was in urgent need of mental help and that as a free person, he was a danger to society. The elder dervish cut ties with Murad after he allegedly tried to kill his mother. In the week leading up to Meixner's murder, the young dervish reportedly tried calling his father several times to express his frustrations over being expelled. In addition to his problems at the University of Arizona, Murad had previously been accused of stalking a female teaching assistant at San Diego State University. He allegedly continued to contact the woman even after she told him to leave her alone and got an order of protection against him. Murad Dervish is being held without bond at the Pima County Jail pending the outcome of his case. Number 4. Student Snaps Over Cell Phone when British literature teacher Tawana Turner tried confiscating a young woman's phone at a high school in Rockdale County, Georgia in January 2023, the student snapped and lost all self-control. Disturbing footage showed the young woman slamming the classroom door, taking the teacher to the floor and repeatedly punching Turner in a frenzied rage. She continued swinging even as bystanders pulled her off the victim. Turner sustained a broken leg and other serious injuries that have required ongoing rehabilitation. As of late April 2023, she was still out of work, unable to drive and relying on crutches to get around. In an interview with Fox 5 Atlanta, Turner said that cell phones are becoming a major problem among students who often go berserk when a staff member tries to take their device away. 
After 27 years of teaching, the exasperated educator said that if she had to start teaching with the current generation of students, she wouldn't be able to do it. At the same time, Turner said she missed her students and that she hoped to return to teaching soon. The video clip of the attack went viral, prompting an outpouring of support for Turner. She was grateful for the overwhelming amount of encouragement and prayers she received from countless strangers, which helped her get through the painful aftermath of the assault. The young woman who attacked Turner pleaded guilty to one felony count of aggravated battery against a teacher. She was sentenced to a year behind bars, followed by three years of probation. Turner told Fox 5 Atlanta that she believes in discipline. She hopes the teen gets whatever help she needs and learns from the experience. She also called for the increased availability of resources for troubled youth. Number 3. Tennessee Teen Pepper Sprays Teacher as a teacher who has worked at high schools across the United States, Caleb Bates has dealt with his fair share of unruly students. He told local station WSMV that he's even had students spit on him, cut his hair, and swing at him. But an incident that occurred one afternoon in May 2023 topped them all when a defiant teen went to extremes to make it clear that she had no plans to follow the rules. While teaching an English class at Antioch High School in Nashville, Bates instructed his students to put their cell phones away. One young woman refused, so he took her phone away. With no apparent plans to back down to her teacher, the student pepper sprayed Bates. In a viral video that first appeared on Reddit, the girl could be seen following Bates into the hallway as she continued trying to get her phone back from him. She demanded her phone and pepper sprayed her teacher a second time, causing him to yell out in pain and fall to his knees. The teen continued ordering Bates to return her phone as a staff member who overheard the commotion exited his classroom and attempted to intervene. According to the Redditor who posted the footage, the student had been texting and googling answers to her schoolwork when Bates took the phone away. She allegedly pepper sprayed the teacher three times before she finally stopped. Bates told WSMV that he tried getting a school administrator to step in after the first time the young woman sprayed him. But a school was understaffed and the administrators on duty were covering for absent teachers, so he was mostly left to handle the situation on his own. At a time when school systems across America are plagued by understaffing and a lack of funding, Bates didn't blame his fellow staff members for the attack. In fact, it was the students Bates took issue with. As he watched a viral video, he noticed that none of the students in it seemed concerned. It wasn't the first time a student attacked Bates. Just two months earlier, he caught another student using their phone to cheat on a test. He took the device away and the teen allegedly punched him in the face. Being assaulted once at Antioch was stressful enough, but the pepper spraying incident left Bates feeling so uncomfortable in his work environment that he decided he was done teaching at the school. He agreed to finish out the year remotely but that he wasn't returning come fall. School officials disciplined the pepper spraying suspect while local authorities charged her for misdemeanor assault. According to the most recent updates on the case, an investigation was ongoing. Number 2. Florida Teacher Meets Students' Fists Violence against teachers has increased in the United States in recent years amid a nationwide staffing shortage. The problem has gotten so bad in some places that teachers' aides and other staff members are absent from classrooms despite policy requiring their presence. This is exactly what happened to a teacher in Osceola County, Florida, named Daniel Morris in early 2023. One of Morris's students was a 19-year-old man who was attending Toho Pacalaga High School as part of the Florida Transition Program, which helps students with certain setbacks transition to adult life. In this particular young man's case, he was allowed to remain in high school until age 22. Morris would later tell local station WFTV that the teen's behavior became increasingly violent over a two-year period. Teachers reportedly asked the school for more support and help working with the student, but severe understaffing meant that the requests landed on the back burner. According to the needs outlined in the teen's learning plan, he needed an aide in the classroom with him. Morris asked the school to provide the teacher's aid as promised, but the student hadn't had one all year due to the ongoing staffing shortage, which left 50 paraprofessional positions at the school unfilled. 
During the lesson on January 18th, Morris told the young man to stop socializing. The teacher remembered being attacked out of nowhere as the student allegedly pushed him to the ground, punched him multiple times in the head and face, and then jumped on top of his body. At one point during the attack, Morris began to worry that he wouldn't make it home alive to see his wife and kids. Harrowing footage showed the victim lying on the ground as his attacker repeatedly punched and kicked him. He suffered a concussion along with lingering headaches and nausea, and he had to take time off work to mentally process what had happened. Morris returned to a new position at a different school a month after the attack. Speaking with WESH, Morris blamed understaffing first and foremost for the rise in violent crimes against teachers. He also said that he thinks students with known violent histories need to be separated from regular classrooms and that the staff members who work with those teens need better training. Upon returning to work, he planned to work with officials to implement new measures for both student and staff safety. Number 1. Substitute quits over safety concerns When students fail to flourish in a traditional classroom setting in North Carolina Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, they're often sent to an alternative school called Turning Point Academy. The goal is to provide a structured environment that helps students change their behavior and get on a better path. But the school has come under criticism in recent years for violent fights and other incidents that have led to safety concerns among the staff. Working at Turning Point got old very quickly for 57-year-old Renata Horton, who began substitute teaching there in December 2022 and decided three months later that she would not be returning. Horton reached her limit when two female students attacked her for simply telling them to take off their hoodies, which are banned at the school. She later told local station WSOC-TV that the confrontation occurred in the presence of a behavior modification technician, or BMT, who is specially trained in managing students' behavior. According to Horton, instead of helping her navigate the conversation, the BMT got in her face and made a comment alluding to how one of the students she was trying to discipline wore a hoodie all the time. Out of nowhere, one of the teens rushed at Horton while the other pulled her to the floor from behind. The young women allegedly proceeded to beat and choke the substitute teacher as she fought to escape the struggle. When she looked around, she noticed that the BMT was nowhere to be found. Horton said that a third female student eventually entered the room and made a comment about how the victim could probably find her hair on the floor since she had just gotten beat up by students. At that point, the substitute decided it was time to leave Turning Point. She later claimed that her daughter took her for medical treatment for injuries to her head, neck and hand after nobody at the school offered to help in any way. Police responded to a 911 call about the alleged attack, but released few details besides clarifying that no weapons were found at the scene. In addition to feeling hurt because she was always good to the students she oversaw, Horton told WSOC-TV that she was concerned about the violence at Turning Point escalating. She even went as far as saying that the school should be shut down before someone ends up sneaking a gun in. Horton also called for better support for troubled teens and better training for the employees who oversee the student population. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get a black eye and a busted lip while coming to a stranger's defense during an attack, or walk away unscathed after intervening in an attack but realize later on that you dropped $100 on the ground? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.